Hi guys, this is Johnny Hunkins at Popular Hot Riding Magazine and today we're here at West Tech Performance Group and we're doing a three-way dyno test on some crane cams with Steve Dulcich in the lead on this project. Steve, tell us about the cams that we're going to be testing and what the whole purpose of this is. Well, basically we've got a very typical street style motor. It's a 454 Chevy and we're testing three different cams basically small, medium, and large. Now, with any camshaft you're going to get a cam card and that's going to give you all the, the uh, important specs. Uh, in this case we've got 222, 230 duration, which is very small, 234, 242, and then for our big cam it measures 248, 256 degrees duration at 50 thousandths. For our test here at West Tech, we're on the Superflow SF902 dyno, and we have a big block Chevy on the dyno, 454 cubic inches. Steve, can you tell us a little bit about how it's equipped and all that stuff? Well, basically, this is going to be every man's street engine. It's based on a factory 454 with an upgrade in the pistons to raise the compression ratio. A lot of the late model 454. Four is a pretty low compression. This one's about ten and a half to one. Cylinder heads are AFR oval ports. They're fully CNC, a very nice head with a moderate port size. Uh, other than that, hydraulic roller cams is what we're testing. Up top, we've got a 4150 carburetor, which is very typical. Uh, we thought for this application, the Dominator would be an overkill or kind of excessive. Yeah, that's a Holly, right? That's in the hard coat gray. Was that a, a that's their ultra double pumper? Well, this one is, uh, yes, and the, the notable thing about these carburetors, besides the finish and the many features, is uh, it's an aluminum bodied construction. It's one of the largest and highest flowing carburetors in a 4150 series. So it's a very good piece. One of the things that you really can't ignore when you do cam testing or cam swaps is the intake manifold. Uh, there's a lot of interaction between the airflow characteristics of the intake and the camshaft event timing. So in the process of testing these three cams, we thought that we would swap from a dual plane here to a single plane here in, during the second camshaft test. And uh, Steve, tell us why we're doing that. Well, generally with the smaller cams, a dual plane manifold is going to emphasize the torque in the RPM range that the cam is working efficiently. Uh, this particular manifold is an Edelbrock Performer RPM air gap. It's probably one of the best two plane manifolds on the market. Now, when you start stepping up the cam to uh, larger durations, you're going to be emphasizing the higher RPM range. And probably at some point, a single plane manifold is going to show a fairly significant increase in uh, top end performance. Well, that test was kind of interesting, the intake manifold test on the middle camshaft. Uh, we got quite a different characteristic on the dyno graph. Same cam, different intake manifolds. What's going on here, Steve? What we have here is basically a textbook example of a single plane versus dual plane comparison. We picked up some numbers here at the top of the horsepower graph, got us up to about 610 horsepower compared to 598. So that's really good for bragging rights. However, if you look at this end of the graph, this is the torque curve, you end up losing a very significant amount of bottom end torque wow. for that gain up top. Uh, the transition area is just under a couple hundred uh, under 5,000 RPM. So it really depends on how your converter is set up or how you're going to use the car. Wow, that's very instructive. Well, I guess our next step at this point is to throw the big cam in there and see how it does compared to the the center one. Well, I think if we see as much of a gain as we did with the last cam change, uh, we'll have a very healthy big block Chevy. Time to change the cams to the biggest one, Steve. 
Yeah, it's really nice to have this two-piece timing cover. That way the uh, oil seal at the front of the motor doesn't have to be disturbed. It makes for a quicker installation and disassembly, especially when you have three cams to run on the same day. All right, Steve, pull out that medium size crane cams bump stick. Let's get that big one in there. Yeah, we picked up a nice 30 horsepower gain with the uh, swap to the medium size cam. And then got another 10 out of it with the uh, single plane manifold. Let's see what we get with the big cam. Right on, brother. Alright, now we're going to try the final run. This is our largest cam with single plane intake. Bad, 631 horsepower. I thought I saw 632. <laughs> well, you, maybe you did. That's but not too bad. Only if you round up. Yeah, if you round. Well, you round to the nearest. 631.6. Oh boy, here we go. That's what I call 632. Okay, well then. Yeah, I actually, it's does round up. That's still wants to rev a couple hundred more. We're going to have to do this again. Definitely picked up the RPM range. Bit of a gain up top too. Well, Steve, our testing is done for the day. We've tested small, medium, and large camshafts, and then we did a me uh, intake manifold swap over for the medium sized cam midway through. Uh, explain to us what we got. It looks like we got a little something for everybody. Well, if you look at the graphs, basically we got the classic results for, for what we did. I, this uh, area right here illustrates the torque curve the best. Uh, highest torque was our smallest cam. As we stepped into the medium cam, we lost some torque, but over here at this end at the horsepower, we picked up a pretty Quite good chunk a of pretty good chunk of horsepower. Now, when we swapped this to the uh, single plane with the very same camshaft, notice we lost almost another identical step in torque. However, on this end, we did pick up horsepower basically from the uh, peak torque area on up. Now yeah, that red trace. The last trace we have here is the uh, the very large cam and the single plane manifold was what we continued with. Again, a loss in torque represented by that area there. And uh, on the other side, you can see it starts pulling away from the next best cam in top end, just about 5500. But it extends our power range, makes a little more top end power and uh, gives us the biggest horsepower number of the day. Well, we've got one more important thing to discuss before we close our operation off here today, Steve, and that is engine vacuum, the drivability of the car. That's the one characteristic that really determines how livable the car is on the street. Well, vacuum is probably the best, best measure that we have of drivability. Uh, we read the manifold vacuum right here at the dyno, and it's also recorded during runs. Uh, we found about 14.3 inches of vacuum with our best, well, I should say, smallest cam which produced the best vacuum. With the medium sized cam, we lost a significant amount of vacuum, somewhere in the mid 11 inches mercury range. Now, this cam, you can see at the very same RPM range, we're fluctuating from the high sixes to the low sevens. Um, you're not going to have a really stable idle with a long duration cam. That's really not even enough to operate uh, vacuum brakes, you know, maybe on a marginal basis. And you're also just talking about having a very weak booster signal at throttle tip-in on your carburetor. Going to make carburetor tuning a little bit more difficult. 
Well, it will, but for a lot of enthusiasts, uh, choppy idle, low vacuum, it's a big part of the game. <laughs> part of the charm, yeah. yeah. So Some people actually prefer a rough, choppy, boulevard-style idle. It just depends on where you're at as an enthusiast and your objectives and goals and uh, how you want to meet them with your parts um, specifications.